esteemed audience thank you for tuning into the show that gives high school students the opportunity to air out their ideologies the best way they can that's to debate on Kenya's number one debate platform this is the great debaters contest season 9 Nairobi region i am your host chris borro and i am esperanza kapanga in today's debate we will have two teams debating the motion social media is the main contributor to rot in our society in the proposition we have moy forces academy and in the opposition are the gentlemen from strathmore school Proposal number 1 you have 3 minutes. Isaac Newton's first law of motion states that a body at rest stays at rest and a body in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an external force. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Randy Mugambi from the indomitable Moy Forces Academy strongly proposing the motion that states social media is the main contributor to the rot in our society today. Now let's get down to business. What really is social media? Social media, according to Google, is the interactive computer-mediated technologies that facilitate the creation and sharing of information, ideas, career interests, and other forms of expression via electronic means. We have a contributor. This is a person who plays a part who plays a part in bringing about a certain result may be good may be bad and rot is a process of deterioration or a decline in the standards of something now social media social media to us is the main contribution to the rate uh, to to the rot sorry in our society today why social media actually propagates the rot in our society today from the other factors we are aware that there are other factors there are other factors which cause the rot in our society today but social media actually catalyzes these other factors just like potassium reacting potassium in water you have a small a small piece of potassium metal put it in a put it in a beaker then add water what happens we are told we are told by the books that the reaction is explosive that's exactly how social media acts just like when you add water to a sodium uh, to a potassium piece of metal now a certain mom from a certain mom was with fifth graders and uh, one time asked them what they what they would miss if they were to travel back in time to the colonial to the colonial days most of the kids mentioned instagram uh, viewing their post friends on instagram talking to their friends on whatsapp and seeing other people's pictures on facebook that's just a small exa- example of how social media is actually influencing our minds now good people did, good people what we were we were all born with a potential we have a potential but we have this one thing this one thing that is is blocking our potential and we're saying it is social media our society today is rotting very fast due to these due to this factor called social media so if i so if i were you would i would i really want to explore my potential or maybe would i want to waste my time on social media thank you that was my time First proposer, you have three minutes to make your case. Dear proposers, I agree with your terms, the definitions you have given us, but I'm going to show you why you are wrong. Now, I want us to liken social media to a saprophyte. A saprophyte feeds on dead decaying matter. So if you find a saprophyte feeding on a dead wood, you will not blame the, sap- the saprophyte for the death of the wood because it was feeding on what is already dead. Now, CSI Nairobi conducted a research in 2007 and 2008. Keep these years in mind, 2007 and 2008. And they concluded that 40,500 cases of rape and pedophilia took place in many areas in the country. Now, most of you know that social media really hit in Kenya between 2012 and 2014. And this is why social media is not a great contributor of the rot because as we have seen the rot was there way before media platforms came to place now let's find out what killed our tree when the british came in 1900 they came and found african communities with strong cultural values but because of many factors the africans 
uh, wanted to get the culture of the white man. The, the aspect that really, the factor that really caught my mind is that the white man came with medicine and treatment for diseases that were really killing Africans. So the white man looked like a savior to the black man. And as a result, seemed as a superior being and seemed to have the superior culture. And our African ancestors disregarded their culture. And this was the onset of all rot in our society. Let me show you why. In the Ma culture, we have this, the patruishi. In the past, you have the patruishi. Now, this was a relationship between a young man and a young lady, whereby the young man will come together, the young lady, and agree on terms. Now, the young man will give the young lady beads as a, as a form of a gift. Now, if the young man was ever found doing any immoral behavior, such as raping, molesting children, thieving, or any other immoral activity, you know them. The young lady will shame this man. How will she, how will she do it? She will take the beads given to her by the young man, put it on a calf of the mother of the, of the young man, and once the calf returned home, everyone will know what really happened. So this really ensured that the community had upright men and women. Let's contrast that to today's society. 20th April 2018, we had two rugby players who were taken to court for gang raping an unfortunate woman. But up to now, a year later, that woman has not received justice. So people, this, can we really blame this on social media? No. We blame it because we have lost our cultural values. If this happened in the past, this, the, the, the two young men will have been punished maybe hours after, after that event took place. So let's attack the bigger elephant in the room. Cultural values are the main contribution to rot in our society. Our loss of cultural values are the main contribution. Thank you. Second proposer, you have three minutes for cross-examination. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm highly allergic to the rumors that are being spread by the, by the opposer side, whereby they are saying that cultural values are the main, are the main propagators of rot in the society. Let me ask you a question, young man. You know, there are certain values in, in the cultural aspects whereby you actually get to learn of instances of good things. Number one, you're taught of, actually, you're taught of obedience, you're taught of culture. After initiation, you're taken through education, whereby you get to learn of important responsible things, whereby you can be a responsible man in the community. Now, let me tell you what, we are not, as my, as my colleague said, we are not against the fact that there are other factors that are causing rot in the society, but social media is the main, and I repeat, it is the main factor that causes rot in the society. Now, I have a very good sister, but let me tell you something. She is not very close to me. Why? Let us take, take a look at this picture. I'm home from school, and then I come, and I come home and I'm like, hey sis, hey bro, that's the end of the conversation. Why? She's busy. Uh, uh, this was the last thing that I wanted to post on Instagram. I doubt whether I had likes. As in, come on, seriously, we are supposed to have this bond between us whereby we are brothers and sisters. I can support you. And then, you know, when, you, when you're actually speaking to the first proposal, when you're actually speaking, man, you actually, you sounded like a good suitor for my sister. But let me tell you, after that, hell, there is no way I'm going to allow you near her. Let me just say that. Now, you know, a recent... A recent occurrence in the year of 20, 2013 on 6th May happened, whereby the Harambe stars, they went to Nigeria to play against Nigeria. Now, they were not very well accommodated. But now look at this. When they, when they went there, they had to be accommodated in, the, in a two-star hotel. Now, let me tell you, Kenyans are very massive in Twitter. If you, are, if you ever come across a Kenyan in Twitter, you'd rather die than meet them. Let me tell you. Now, within moments, there was actually a hashtag trending, hashtag someone tell Nigeria. Now the thing started off quite well, and then everyone, Nigerians were kind of replying it in a good manner, and then they also started their own hashtag, hashtag someone tell Kenya. Very soon, they are very rowdy and responsive comments to that. Now I'm telling you, these are underemployed people, underemployed idiots. Now let me get you, let me get this straight, get this straight, get this straight. I'm not saying that they are underemployed 
underemployed idiots, but the site which I used to research for this information called them underemployed idiots. Now, if the site itself is calling them idiots and it is a form of social media, come on, you guys really want to tell me that social media is not the main factor that causes rot in our society? Now, let us look at this. There is this story that has happened on May 25th. May 25th of 2019, whereby this Instagram girl who was 16 years posted and she asked the audience to choose whether she should tell her to live or die. Let me tell you, people voted for her to die. And the next few minutes, she was dead. That is why I'm standing before you to tell you that social media is the main factor that causes rot in this society of ours. Thank you. Second opposer, you have three minutes to cross-examine. There are many things I have to clarify. And first of all, I'd just like to say that I'm deeply sorry that you and your sister don't talk as much. However, people have choices. And if she's prioritizing Instagram over you, I think that's a personal problem and should not be brought on stage. <laughs> now, there have been allegations that social media is, there have been allegations that social media is the main cause of rot in our society. And I love the fact that he brought out suicide because I think that that is something very sensitive and something that really speaks to me. However, tell me, if this girl had asked people, do you not think they would simply tell her to die? People aren't using social media to commit evil. People are evil. How are we blaming the tool for what's wrong with people? If someone tells you to die, does it really matter if they send you a text or if they just say it? The message is the same. Social media has done nothing. It is the people who are the problem. I think that one of the main reasons, I think that one of the main reasons our society is rotting is, well, the deterioration of cultural values. And I'd like to bring up his sister again because I believe that in the modern day, the family unit has been broken. We have parents who are occupied by work cycles that don't allow them to come home and talk to us. Our nuclear family unit does not provide us time to meet our elders and receive advice from them. We have a generation of lost children. Who am I to turn to if my father happens not to be home, if my mother is too busy working? I no longer have my relatives to come and guide me. Do you know how many things the youth are getting into because they lack guidance? If we had embraced our culture, this would not be happening. The blow that has been dealt on the family unit by colonialism is irreparable. I don't understand how social media can be blamed because that is a scapegoat. And on the Day of Atonement, I will not stand behind it. I would rather face judgment than blame it on something that clearly isn't the cause. I think that it's wonderful to connect with friends, which is why I don't see how someone missing liking their, Instagram their friend's Instagram posts is such a bad thing. I think that we need to address the real issue here. Now, recently, Repeal 162 was denied. And I'm not surprised because we are an African country with African values. However, the fact that the youth could even consider this appropriate for our society shows that we are lost. Society is rotting. We do not have good role models at home. We do not have a family unit that is strong that will call us aside and tell us, this is not right. You are a Kenyan. You should stand behind what your ancestors have lived by. Do not take what the colonial man has given you and call it culture. That is a shallow imitation of who you really are. I think we are all trying to reach our full potential and to do that, we must embrace our roots. We cannot simply move to a new farm for that tree has history. Our family trees have history. The culture is what is missing. If we simply embrace our culture, I believe that the rot in society will be eradicated. Mark Gitaka, please stand behind me and be your African self. The proposers have been asked, if social media is the main cause of rot in our society, then what is their suggestion in order to fix this problem? The opposers, on the other hand, have been asked, how do we reinstill our native culture into the society? <laughs> Proposer number three, you have three minutes to respond. Don't mind me, I'm just waving. So uh, I think we all know about uh, Messi. Messi is uh, a football player for football club Barcelona, isn't it? Most of us only know Messi, why? But there's also the Barcelona team. This is because the team contributes, yes, but Messi is the main contributor. He's the fuel to the fire. And basically, when I come here to oppose this motion, I'm bringing that, that basic view 
into this content. So basically, uh, back to the waving part of things, Let's, let me just tell you what waves are. Wave is a kind of hairstyle where people sh uh, flatten their curly, curly hair so that they can create ripple effect on their hairstyle, isn't it? So two weeks ago, on uh, April 25th of uh, 2019, DJ Mustard was uh, surfaced to a diss from Mick Mill, which said that his uh, waves were fake. Then, in a quick reaction, he sent a video of him brushing his waves. And now, basically, in my school, for example, people are busy, not with studies. They're busy with studies, but during their free time, they're busy waving, trying to create waves. So what does this bring? Peer pressure. Social media, social media can bring peer pressure. Another thing, FOMO. It's a new phenomenon that came up the same time as uh, Facebook. It is the fear of missing out. When I don't want to miss out, I don't want to be not, I want to be part of uh, the waving part of life. I want to be part, a part of it. So I'll go into depression and anxiety to try and please these people. My names are Ali Din Hussein from the Moiforces Academy. Uh, just to answer now the question that was posed uh, to me, it's called, how can we tackle this? Basically by keeping in stricter regulations, filtering content, and also there are apps by parents which, uh, should, which can uh, block sites according to age. So basically, I think I've answered your question beyond reasonable doubt and to a, a satisfactory manner. Another thing also, I wanted the girl who asked the question, I forgot your name, I just want to answer you. We're humans, we're not perfect. So basically, he slipped his tongue. It was supposed to be 15th of May, 2019. Sorry for that error from the Daily Nation. You can confirm if you want. Another, uh, as I conclude, basically, I wanted uh, to say cyberbullying also. This is the instance between Mick Mill and uh, DJ Master is a form of cyberbullying. Why? Because Mick Mill is uh, dissing, uh, is, Mick Mill is dissing uh, DJ Master. And therefore, he's trying to Force bully him. Remember, some years ago, bullying was face to face. You could come and bully me, then it could get physical, isn't it? But these days, somebody can just bully you anonymously. You don't know who it is because the websites are the social media platforms filter. They hide his face. Uh, as I conclude, I would like uh, to say that there is also an increased rate of extramarital affairs because. People are dating, out, are dating outside the, on social media side. They don't know each other's characters. Thank you. Fado Puzo, you have three minutes to respond to your question. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Victor Wayaki, and I have a few problems with the proposers. First of all, they've just been caught in a massive lie. They just tried to make up a story about a girl who, gave a poll, who did a poll online and gave the date as today. Do you trust their arguments if they are lying to you openly? Secondly, we've been told that Messi is like social media. He's the catalyst. Unfortunately, I don't believe Messi is like social media. I believe social media is the ball. Messi is the people who use social media for evil. The ball is simply the tool that does the damage. You can't blame the tool instead of the people. I was asked a question about how we should reintegrate African culture into today's society. Well, I think it's very simple. We should have lessons, true history lessons, which simply don't whitewash the evils done in colonialism, but also show us our true African culture as it was 200 years ago, 300 years ago. It was a beautiful thing that we never get to learn. Secondly, we should have more family time. This could be done by easing office hours, which can be mandated by law if necessary. I hope that answers the audience's question. Now, um, eight years ago, my sister finished her KCPA exam, and as usual, we were waiting with quite bated breath for the results. So we sat by the radio with the TV on just in case we see her name popping up. Unfortunately, it didn't. Instead, the top female student was being interviewed, I believe on KTN. I don't quite understand how I remember that detail, but I do. And she said something that chilled me. She said, the end justifies the means. 
I fear that that has become a common ethos shared by the Kenyan people. Basically, our success justifies however we do, whatever we do to get it. For example, when I skip the line in school for lunch, I'm thinking, hey, so long as I get served my lunch, none, none suffers for it. A few years later, I'll cheat in my national exam just to get ahead of the rest of the park. Later in life, I may perhaps bribe an official to get my driving license in time, and God knows if I'll go ahead and cause a car crash that kills many, many people. This character flaw that states that the end justifies the means is a source of so much evil that goes on in society and also directly contravenes SDG number 16 that says that is for peace, justice, and strong institutions. If we do not care about how we get to the end, how on earth do we expect to have justice? Do we expect to have strong institutions? And ultimately, in the absence of justice, we will lack peace. Thank you. Proposals, you have one minute to make a final submission. You know, I personally think that it's either you don't read physics or your physics teacher is not that well informed because that's why your points don't actually have weight. Let me just tell you. Now, number one, why, why do you need more family time? It's because of social media. Come on, take a look at WhatsApp. As in each and every time I have a phone, I have to be on WhatsApp. On a serious note, I have to check everyone's Facebook. I have to check everyone's status. I have to go to Instagram. I have to check what their story is. I have to check their Facebook to story. That is why social media is taking up the time for the family. And that is why social need media needs to, be feel needs to be actually toned down. And that is why it is the main and the main factor that causes rot in the society. Now, let me talk about this. There is the instances of sugar mommy. Sugar mommies, actually. Now, there are actually groups whereby student, students are, 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 are put in those groups so that they can have conversations with potential sugar mommies. Now, let me just conclude by saying this. Ladies and gentlemen, if this day, these are the type of parents that you're going to have in this, in, this, in this country of ours, the type of parents who are going to let their children use social media. That thing is honestly going to bring a rot, in not only in our generation, but in future generations to come. Thank you. Opposers, you have one minute to sum up. The argument that social media is the main cause of rot in our society is very addictive, very persuasive. It's almost like the apple in the story of Adam and Eve but we all know how that story ended. So I'm asking you to turn away and open your eyes to reality. We will not continue to blame the tool. We will instead face the real issue. I don't believe that I have lied to you because I am an honest man. And honesty is one of those moral values that African culture instilled us with. UCLA Brain Mapping Center did a study with a sample size of 10,000 exposing that 67% of participants we're already engaging in extramarital affairs, but social media merely helped expose them. Social media is an ever-changing tool, and today it seems to be a lens because it's not really doing anything but showing what we already knew was there. Social media has done nothing wrong. It is not the main contribution to rot in society, but rather us forgetting our own culture. The problem is that we have been attacked, and it's not what we own that has been attacked, but who we are. Thank you. Starting with Moy Forces, Randy, you are the first speaker, and when you took on the stage, you appealed to our emotions, talking about the mom's story, and I was really swayed, but at the back of my mind, I was also asking, do you, can you connect this to some research somewhere? Bring it home, give us facts, give us evidence. However, despite all that, you had quite a posture, and your presence on stage was a very strong one. And I also like the fact that you took us back to chemistry class. If your chemistry teacher was here, uh, he or she would be a very proud teacher. Moses, um, you came on stage and you brought on the humor 
aspect of it and you were very passionate and you had quite a style, a good style and presentation of um, the message that you wanted to put forth. You also talked about the sister analogy and I was waiting for the part where you will give us some research also. Like that was the appealing to my emotion, but I was waiting for you. Some research has been done somewhere and it has proven that as a result of social media, this percentage of families have broken or something, something so that it's not just emotional or relationship between things you've observed in your environment but even outside. Ali Dean, you talked about how social media can lead to peer pressure, cyberbullying, extramarital affair, all strong points and um, uh, swaying, yes, but not entirely. There was opportunity also for you to dig deeper there and I kept waiting to listen for the evidence, the research behind that. However, you took on the stage and you were very confident in what you're saying and that was a good thing. Jumping on to the side of the opposers, Strathmore, I'll start with you, Albert. Albert, I'm a biology teacher, so when you start speaking about a saprophyte feeding on a dead, decaying mat, I was like, yes, yes, this student has been paying attention in class. And you really connected it well to uh, that the society is already rotten and social media is not the thing that is causing the greatest rot in it. So that was a very good analogy you gave right there. And then you went on talking about the culture, etc., etc. but I was still looking for evidence. I wanted to hear research done somewhere, something credible, so that it's not only what you have had or your teacher in biology has told you but it's something that has been proven. Mark, you are one speaker and I noticed when you started to speak the entire audience went mute and everyone was listening to you. You have something good going for you there. You're very confident and you're very composed and your voice is just one that everyone wants to listen to. And it was not just all beautiful, wonderful voice. You also brought on facts and you are very convincing and your examples. And as a second speaker, you had a rebuttal that was very directly addressing what your opponents had spoken of. And um, in general, I just felt you were really strong in your position as a second speaker. Um, then finally, we had Victory. Um, you talked of, so I think you were asked solutions and you came up with the solutions. Let's reduce time so that we have uh, eight hours of working, etc., etc. Beautiful connection to SDG number 16. Um, however, even for you, I was still looking for facts. I was still listening out for evidence. That being said, I appreciate both teams and I wish you the best. Moi Forces Academy. You and yourself. 69%. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Strathmore School. You and yourself. 72.4%. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations to Strathmore School, to Moy Forces Academy. Do remember that the trick is not in whether you win or lose, it's in how you play the game. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's only on the Great Debates Contest you get debates like this that are informative and intellectual. The debate may be over, but the conversation still continues across our social media platforms with the hashtag GDC for SDGs. Until next time, I've been your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperanza Kapanga.